I am Ken Rusk. I live in Toronto, and if you walk into my apartment and look around, you will see things are related from Iran. In July of 1971, we moved to Tehran as I was working for Ontario Hydro on a project to set up centralized control of the power system in Iran. Operation of the power system in Iran was not coordinated, with the result that there were frequent interruptions when the independent action was taken. So Tavernier was using us and other international consultants to modernize the control of the power system. In those days, I always would carry my camera when it, wherever I would go, and as a result, it took almost 1,000 photos from Iran. A few months ago, after I got to know Ali through a volunteering project in Toronto, after learning he was from Iran, I told him about our family trip to Iran and having all those positive slides from Iran. He became very enthusiastic about it, and he thought we should find them, digitalize the slides, and make them available for others to see. He put a great deal of effort to scan and edit the slides and make them presentable. In July 1971, I arrived in Mehrabad Airport in Tehran with my family. I remember Tehran was very hot, even at midnight. And from the airport, we took a taxi to a hotel called Semiramis on Avenue Roosevelt, close to the U.S. Embassy. We immediately started to look for accommodation without success. After connecting with some American expats, we used the services of their real estate agents and found a lovely ground floor apartment in Kuchi Haft, Dabodia, between Chihelopanj Metri Street and Zafar Street. The view from our balcony was downtown Tehran and behind us was the Albros Mountains, which we did not see for two months as they were completely shrouded in dust and smog until after the first rain in September. They suddenly appeared in all their glory and we were excited when we saw that. When we arrived in Tehran, Shah Yad Maidan was being built. It was very striking. When someone comes into Iran from Mehrabad, seeing Shah Yad Maidan on the way from the airport was an incredible introduction to all of the grand features of Iran. Moving from Canada to the Middle East was a major cultural shock for me and my family. Probably more for my family than me as I was going to work every day and already traveling. It was frustrating because we had to accept things 
were not the same. By September, the children were in school, but my wife was still experiencing difficulties. The first Christmas was something that we were looking forward to, and the first snow appeared December 15th and cheered us up, and after we had our Christmas, we felt at home in Tehran. We had been advised to be very careful about what, we say, about what we say and where we say it, as it might be misunderstood and get us in trouble. For example, one day I was searching for an agent to arrange for my sea shipment to be picked up, and I was having difficulty locating the agent, and suddenly I realized a young, well-dressed gentleman approached and called me by name and asked me if I needed help, and he escorted me to the agency. I suddenly realized that we were indeed being watched by government. We heard from a friend about an expat who drew a mustache on a picture of the Shah, and the next morning he was escorted out of the country. Since we have always been active church members, one of the first things we wanted was a place to worship. Within the first week of our arrival in Tehran, we discovered Tehran Community Church in Abbasabad. The members of the church were mostly American and Canadian expats. In fact, the pastor was an American Presbyterian, and his wife was from Yorkminster Park Baptist Church in Toronto. And through them, we were able to find a suitable school for the children so the church became our community. Tehran was more modern than what we expected. For example, everyday products that we needed were available. We really enjoyed the fresh fruits and vegetables that were available in local markets, and soon we discovered chela kebab and other Iranian dishes. We found the culture very tolerant to us as foreigners, but by the same token we made certain that we respected their customs. <laughs> Driving in Iran was always a challenge at first. In fact, I did not drive for the first six months as driving was wild and scary. 
In few occasions, often on mountain roads with sharp curves, the driver of our car would pass other cars with no visibility of what might be coming toward us. So I decided to take control of the situation and I finally rented a Pecon for a few weeks and then bought my own Aria. This car was made in Iran with parts imported from Brampton, Ontario, and it was a nice car. One thing I like to talk about is that boss, who was our driver in the beginning, and my friend later as he was a Tavernier driver when we had to travel throughout the country, and I got to know him personally. He would use my car to take my wife shopping, and when my parents came to Iran, he drove us down to the Caspian. He was completely trustworthy. He knew my kids, and he was a great driver, and when he was driving my family, I knew they were in good hands, and often, I wonder today where he is. During our stay in Iran, partly because my work required traveling, and partly we as a family wanted to discover as much of the country as we could, we had a tr chance to travel much of the country. I remember Esfahan being so beautiful and clean. The mosque, the bazaar, Shehel Satun, and I remember, remember Siwa Sipul over Zayanda Rood shining at night.
We went to Tabriz at Nowruz. The most significant part of our visit was seeing the Silver Bazaar and getting to know, to know Mr. Vijay, who was an Armenian silversmith. He was such a nice gentleman. He explained to our kids how silver pieces were being made and we bought a lot of them and I still have them and intend to keep them. When we went to Shiraz, it was pleasantly sunny and the roses were just awesome. After Shiraz, we went to see Persepolis, and we found the remains of the ancient palace astonishing. When we arrived there, they were being prepared for the 2500 celebration, so the tent city was being built. But there were no restrictions, meaning there was no high security yet. When you travel from Tehran to the north, the weather and the landscape changes from very dry to humid. The sceneries of the mountains and the Caspian Sea was gorgeous. Seeing rice and tea farms and the Mushireen and Narangi trees were exciting to see completely different side of Iran. I remember the sand of the Caspian Sea was so hot that we had to wear flip-flops. I remember having my parents over from Ontario to Iran. We stayed at Grand Hotel Ramsar, and they loved it. And you should know that this place was where a European people would come to a holiday, and it was superb.
church once took us to Bandar Turkoman. It was quite interesting to see how Iran is diverse with different appearance, dress, and culture. We went to Turkoman Bazaar and bought three carpets, which are still being used in our house. At Desville, we saw the Mohammad Reza Shah Pahlavi Dam and power installation, which had previously been commissioned by Ontario Hydro Contact. Taking photos of the dam and powerhouse was a big challenge, and the risk was great as they were taken from openings in the spiral tunnel down to the powerhouse level. The entire facility was heavily guarded and highly secured. I remember our one day our friend rented a houseboat on the lake above the dam. Most of those in the houseboat swam, except for me. After we were back to Canada, experience of living in Iran stayed with our family. We felt it was the experience of a lifetime. We still remember some Farsi and the names of food and places. Over the years, Iran went through different difficulties, and I've always had concerns about people we knew from there, and wonder whether they are safe or not.
One day, if I had a chance, I would like to visit Iran again. I think Iran is a beautiful country, and I hope things work out for the best for the people of Iran. <laughs>